everybody. This is a little bit of video about a new knitting project that I just launched into without much forethought. <laughs> it's a very small project though. I am knitting a hat, but more specifically, I am going to make a felted hat, which I've never done before. Um, felting wool kind of makes me nervous. It's like there's some kind of magic going on here that I don't know about. But um, a lady shared a picture of a hat on a Facebook group. It's a Spinning Fibers Facebook group. I think that's right. Here's a picture of the hat. And then here is a picture of, I think, the same hat before she felted it. So there's this. And she gave some very brief description of how she did it. I like, you know, how many stitches she cast on, where she reduced. It's all a little vague, but I tried to decipher it. And I'm giving it a shot. Now here is um, the label for the yarn that I'm using to knit this, okay? Um, Patton's classic wool, and it says it's for felting, so I'm assuming this is just regular wool, not super washed, so if you do wash it, it's going to shrink. And this is exactly what I want. Of course, you, the reason I've never done this is you have to make it bigger so that when it shrinks and felts, it's the right size. Well, I never knew how much bigger, and it's not anything I ever looked into. Well, she, she gave exact measurements. She said to use size 17 needles. Well, she gave the other measurement, but they're size 17, so these things are huge. This is a really nice set that us I got somewhere. I don't think I paid for them. Somebody gave them to me. Um, I'm using some wool. Uh, this, this skein that I've had for years and I was always afraid to use it. it was a beautiful color, really beautiful blue. But again, I didn't want to make something and sell it and have it shrink in the wash. I didn't want to make something and not be able to wash it. So I just never used it. It's been sitting around. I'm hoping, this is my own foolishness. I'm hoping that one skein is enough for the hat. We will see about that. So I've already, um, I cast on, I'm doing it. She didn't say to do this. I think she used, I think she did it in one panel and then sewed a seam afterward. Um, so she used, you know, she might have used circular needles or straight needles, but she didn't do it in the round. I'm doing mine in the round. Um, and so because uh, it's in stockinette stitch, which means you have to do row of knit, row of pearl, row of knit, row of pearl. <laughs> I don't like purling. <laughs> so if you do it in the round, then it's all pearl. Okay, so it's this tube. So this is it so far. This is the brim on the bottom. You start with the brim and work your way to the crown of the head. And you can kind of see where it changes in here. This is where the one row of reduction is. Now it's hard to see that it's getting smaller because the cable on my circular needles is kind of big. And now that I've reduced, it's stretching the top of the hat out a bit. Um, soon I'm going to have to find a different needle arrangement. <laughs> when I start reducing again toward the crown, my cable is going to be way too big and I won't be even be able to fit the hat on there. I think if I find a second set of circular needles and have the top of the hat on two sets of circular needles, I might be able to do it. I've never done this before. I mean, ideally you'd want double pointed. I don't have any size 17 double pointed needles. Oh no. Um, I have a little basket of circular needles and a whole bunch of straight needles and I'm sure, I'm sure I'll work out something. <laughs> I'll let you know, but um, I'm having fun with this. It's a nice quick boy. Anything on size 17 needles is fast and I had is not a big garment, but I have like maybe 45 to 50 grams left, but I'm well over halfway through the surface area of this hat. So anyway, isn't that a pretty color? It's a beautiful color. Yeah, if this turns out well, I may make a lot of these. I'd love to make a lot of these and sell them at the farmer's market. I think people would pay for a felted hat. Yes, if it turns out as cute as hers did. We'll see. She just said to throw it in the washing machine. <laughs> or throw it in the machine until it's the right size. I was like, I'm going to have to look that up on YouTube. All right, so I will return when I know more. Thanks. Thanks. 
Now before I get to the bitter end of this video, I thought I'd better stop and show you what I'm doing in order to accomplish the final reduction at the crown of the head. I want to first say I thought for sure I was going to run out of yarn and have to switch to some other unknown wool that wouldn't match and I'd have this little, you know, disc on top of the head of a different yarn. Oh, I was dreading that, but it, it actually didn't happen. When I got to the point, which was supposed to be 13 and three quarters inches up from the brim is when I was supposed to start reducing. I nearly made it there. I just, I was becoming so impatient because I was anxious about running out. Now I wish I'd gone further, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, when I got to this last reduction point, which is when you have to start knitting two together every time to reduce very quickly toward the top, um, I was just amazed at how fast it went down, but I knew that I would have to do something about my needle situation. I was using these. These are size 17. The best second option I had were these, also circulars, which are 15. And what I've ended up doing, and I think it's working fine, as long as you watch the transition points here from, see, this is one cable, here's the other, and at the other end, you don't want these to get pulled too open or anything. So you want to keep them nice and snug. But basically, I have about half my stitches on one needle and half on the other. I did that by just at, at any point, it doesn't matter when, because it's just in a circle, I passed um, half of the stitches, about, I didn't even measure, count, but about half of them from this needle, and I just started knitting onto the pink, okay? And then when I'd gotten about halfway around, I stopped. And what you end up doing to make this work is I keep all of these stitches on this set of circular needles and all these on this set of circular needles, okay? Does that make sense? So right now, my working yarn, where is it? It's up here. So um, I think I've just gotten done. No, I'm going to be starting the wooden ones. That's why the tip end here is so close. And so I'm going to just knit, and I'm gonna do two together, two together, two together. I'm just about, I'm really so close to being done. I'm supposed to get to where I only have six stitches left, which means I'll have three on this side and three on the other. And she didn't say in her instructions what to do at that point. I'm assuming that at that point you just stitch them together with some excess yarn so that you don't end up with this little point on the top, which would look kind of silly, like a pixie. So I'm nearly there, but I just wanted to make that point to anybody who's trying to wrap their brain around how can I reduce um, knitting in a tube like this in the round, how can I reduce using circular needles if you have two pair, because you can, because um, since they're circulars, this, this lovely flexibility is what you want, okay? And so if you're feeling bound and stiff, you just slip that out of there and keep on knitting. Um, like I could keep, this happened last time, I had to keep the rest of these onto here and only have the last two or so on the needle um, so that it worked. Anyway, give that a try instead of feeling like you have to knit knit it flat um, using, you know, stockinette stitch where you're doing purling every other time. This is actually really possible. So I'll be doing more of this, but I am going to look for a second set of size 17 needles, I think. We'll see how this works. It's only like the last, man, I don't know, four rows or something. I don't think it'll make any difference to use 15s and 17s. All right, we're almost there. Now here's another little conundrum. I'm just knitting along. I've knitted two onto there. Remember, I'm knitting two together. So I'm gonna knit these two together. Oh, and then I have a single. What do I do with that? Well, what you wanna do is to um, pull it off and put it onto the other needle. I'll put it onto the next pink needle and stitch it with the next one around. That's easy enough to do. Okay, so I did finish off the nice thing is, like, even the top looks a little bit, eh, I don't know about that, but it's going to felt, and so it's all going to pull together, and you won't even be able to see the individual stitches. Now, this is how big the hat is before I'm felting it. I mean, it's really, that's how big you want it to be. She said she thought, <laughs> sorry about that, that was kind of silly. She said she thought it felted, it reduced down about 40%, so not quite half of its size. 
This may end up being a rather small hat. It may end up being a rather short hat. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. I may adjust the pattern in future. I have a good bit of wool that I need to use up that I've never, never um, done anything with because it was wool <laughs> and it would felt. So, um, all right, I'm going to go, what does she say? Throw this in the machine, see what it does. Oh, at the end, I ended up with four stitches on one circular needle and three on the other. And then eventually, and then I just took one of the needles out and passed the stitches onto the other so that they were lying parallel to each other, almost at the, like at the toe of a sock before you do the kitchener stitch to close it up. Um, that kind of toe sealing stitch. And I, I didn't really want to look up how to do a kitchener stitch. It was kind of vague in my brain generally how to do it. So I kind of, you know, winged it myself. Um, which is the reason why the top doesn't look great. Well, see, this is very much an experiment. Um, and if I like how it turns out, in spite of uh, my own errors, then I'll probably look up a, a better pattern uh, instead of this one. All right, throw it in the machine. That's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the adventure of the hat. This is a hat distraction. I was in the middle of spinning for the Tour de Fleece, happily spinning along, and then I saw this picture of a hat on Facebook, and I thought, I have to try that. And besides, I have all this wool. Okay, I'm not gonna keep you waiting any longer. When I pulled this out of the second hot wash in my washing machine, I thought, oh, I went too far, it's too small. I thought this will be a children's hat, because it does look, I've, the only thing I've found to put it on is this bucket <laughs> to try to stretch it out some. So here is, but here it, it's looking better and better. It's still damp. <laughs> okay, I have to tell you about my head though. I've never worn hats because hats sit horribly on my head because I have a long head from the front to the back. My head's like long, it's not round. And so when I pull a hat on my head, I can never get it all the way down, okay? And I didn't expect this to be any better. I really thought I would sell these at the farmer's market. I might have to keep this one. Because when I put it on, it didn't fit. Oh no. It just sits on top of my head. Okay? Which is fine. As long as I'm not wearing it for winter weather, it's not going to keep my ears warm or my neck warm. But look! It's kind of cute. A little bitty. Now, it doesn't have much of a brim. It's true, I was afraid of running out of yarn, and so I stopped a little. It would be a teeny bit longer if I'd kept going and used all the yarn, but not not a whole lot longer because um, this stuff really felt swell. I mean, look at that. Isn't that, isn't that astounding? What I thought was weird was how slopey it is. It's very, it's not up and down. It's more like a little mound. It's like an Indian mound. You can roll the brim down as much as you like, or roll it up as much as you like. I've been putting it on here. When I put it on here, of course, it adopts the shape of this, um, that. They're very stretchy. Adam says he's seen people stretch these out a bit. Anyway, but I will say that I am much happier with this hat than I expect it to be. And I can see a few, see there's some opening at the top, the top, the end of it needs work. So this one's a bit imperfect. The thing that is very perfect about it though is the color. It's kind of a heather blue. That Patton's um, classic wool. Now that is something I could get at um, a Michael's store. I decided to go back to doing it. Oh my goodness. I've never ever in my life had a hat look cute and not hurt my head. <laughs> okay, so the fun thing is I went digging in my yarn drawer that has all my wool in there that I really don't go in there much. And I'd forgotten I had all this and I don't remember where it came from. It might have come from the thrift store. Seems unlikely. Maybe somebody sent it to me. Okay, I gotta put glasses on so I can see what I'm doing here. Oh. Well, there's another tag. Two of these skein. No, this is a hank. When they have this twisty look, this is a hank. When they have this look, this is a skein. 
And of course, this is a ball. So, obviously. So here's a hank, and it says, and I think I've talked to you about these before, Manos de Uruguay. So it's um, handmade in Uruguay, or by Uruguay hands. Um, and it's all wool, kettle dyed. Um, so I am certain that this will be hand spun. Okay, the thing about this yarn is it is a single ply, and I have lots of it. This, this, I might do those two together. I might do kind of this brownie olive with some black and probably do this blue with either one of these two balls. Um, so, and then I've got a gorgeous plum colored one. Not quite red like this, but more of a plum in the living room. That's what I'm going to do next. Look, I'm wearing a hat and it's not even killing my head and it's comfortable. Now, if I were in a windstorm, it would blow it right off, but that's not the point. This is supposed to be a cute hat. Oh, I'm just, I don't know what to think. Okay, so um, it takes, well, this was a hundred grams on this skein, on this hat, but I was doing it I was using it twice as fast because I was doing a double thickness. This is already bulky, so I won't have to double this one. Um, but it is a single ply, very thick. Um, I think that'll be fine. It'll knit fine, and I don't know why it wouldn't felt fine. And this will be a gorgeous color. This will be a pretty color, nice and purpley. Yeah, I think I'm going to have an assortment of hats. And then I'm going to have to pick the one that I like best. But if I asked my mother, she would choose this one because it's blue and it matches your eyes. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think I may have found a new hobby is making felted hats. So you can get all the 100% uh, non-superwash wool you want because uh, a lot of people don't want that stuff. They buy it and then they're like, oh, this is going to shrink. Exactly. <laughs> and I started this yesterday afternoon. It's still a little damp. See, when I put it on my head, it forms to my head. I could put a little, I've got a little, uh, those little hair pins, you know, hat pins. I've got some of those. I've got one that has a little bird on me and it belonged to my husband's grandmother. And I think it was her mother's or grandmother's very old. Ooh, I've got ideas. All right. Thanks. Thanks. I'm going to call this a squirrel project. A squirrel project is the project that distracts you from the other projects that you were very focused on, and all of a sudden, squirrel, and you go off in the hat direction. So this is a squirrel project. I'm back with the ongoing hat adventure. This will probably be the end of a hat adventure, at least uh, that you have to watch on this video. Okay, so I'm still wearing this hat because I think this is my favorite hat. I think it turned out so well because I used uh, real, well, real yarn. I used um, plied yarn. So this is a, you know, commercial plied yarn. Um, the yarn I used for the next hat this yarn. This is the color I did. Boy, that looks so bright, almost fuchsia as I'm looking at the camera, but it wasn't that bright. Maybe if I turn on the overhead light, it'll help. Let me do that. Okay, so as I said, this was a single ply, uh, kind of a thick and thin, but fairly chunky. Uh, and I have tons of this yarn, like I showed you. And this is the hat. This is how this hat turned out. Okay, so it did felt, I, this was one Actually, this was not a whole um, cycle on the washing machine. I got in there and it looked so small, I yanked it out. I was like, oh. but then you can still stretch it out. So, okay, so this one looks like this. This one I did more, um, followed the pattern and made it bigger, okay? And so, yes, it fits my head. It's kind of cute. It comes down a bit longer. The, the rim is more ripply, and I think that's a result of the yarn. I think that's what happens when you have this thick and thin yarn that's inconsistent, 
is you get an inconsistent brim. Although some people really like that, that look. And the other thing you can do, um, some of the brim seems a little bigger. You can just turn up the brim around your face, which is kind of fun. Um, and then that makes it kind of flare. So that, and that one's just a little bit, just that little bit bigger. See if I put it, if I put that on, so you can see, see this edge over here is, and this one jumps out at you. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, and if I hold it up, you can see, you can still kind of see the holes to it. Nothing wrong with that. If it were just plain knitted, you'd see even more holes, but that's because it's not fully felted. And, um, I may put it in for another load and then take it out and stretch it again. Let's see. Let's see. I'm still using this plastic bucket to kind of stretch them out on. So see this one. Even this one, you can see a couple of holes. Oh, maybe not really. I can see them through the top. It's definitely stiffer. God, I like that so much. I've never in all of my years had a hat that I could wear in comfort until this one. Right now, here's another hat. I, <laughs> I went sorting through the hats that are hanging on our hall tree in the dining room. And I was like, this one doesn't fit. This one doesn't fit. This one doesn't. These are hats that I made that don't fit. And so I'm going to give them to the thrift store. Um, some not, I had an L.L. Bean black, nice hat with a little brim. Um, another hat that I had crocheted for warmth um, and a sailing hat that really doesn't fit. It also has a brim. Okay, so then there's this hat. <laughs> when I took this one out of the washer, it was in terrible shape. Now I made this, I'll put a picture here of my daughter wearing the hat and I put a picture of me wearing the hat. Um, so you've seen me in this hat before. Look, look how long it was. It actually didn't shrink up a lot. This is wool, it's not super washed, so it should have shrunk. A, it actually did shrink up a lot. It was floppy big, okay? It ha it's such a long hat because it's designed to have a very big band on the bottom. It's still wet because it was it's really thick. This is some of my homespun that I did. Okay, I don't know if I can get it on. Mm, this is how most hats fit me. They give me a headache because it's like, oh, I feel like somebody's got a boa constrictor on my head. <laughs> But somebody with a no more normal sized head or who likes a snug hat might really like that. I could see that thing's not gonna blow off your head, that's for sure. If I live in a colder place and needed a, a hat, that might be good in the winter time when it's 20 degrees outside and blowing a gale. Um, the thing is, the time of year when it's really blowing a gale here is during hurricane season, and that's about September, August, September. And at that point, it's still 95 degrees outside. Um, so, so, felt a three hat so far. This one also, I didn't felt <laughs> all the way. See, I try to take that off, and then I put this on. Oh. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to keep on felting. I may take, a, I've got a, I'm planning a trip out to Moorhead City. I now have three places I need to go. I would love to go to Michael's and find some more Patton's plastic wool um, or something comparable because I really do like the result of this hat. And knowing that I did have enough to finish, I would have gone a little bit longer and made it a little bit bigger. Although I just think it's pretty cute the way it is. Okay, so right now I'm rolling up, um, I'm rolling up this blue out of its hank into a ball. And so I'll make another one, but it will look like this one. It really looks, see, look at it from the side. It looks like it has a back and a front. Let me try that. Maybe I should put a little tag in the back, tell them where the back is. Do y'all like that? You think that's cute enough? It is pretty cute. Hmm, nice color. So we'll have a blue. The other thing, though, I'm thinking about doing with felting, if I can find a pattern, is I want to make slippers, felted slippers. I don't know if you've seen these. and I don't have a pair, so I, I don't have any photo to show you. But I've got a friend who makes these. Um, I might see if she'll, 
shoot me her pattern if she's got it. I want an easy pattern because I'm not a great knitter. Um, well, as you saw, I really just want to do stockinette stitch. Actually, I want to do it on circular needle so I don't ever have to purl. I've done some cabling in the past. I can do it, but it takes all of my brain. And I don't really have all of my brain anymore, so I don't know if I can cable anymore. <laughs> all right, enough of that silliness. Okay, so these are hats. So far, I'm liking this project. I will get back to, um, I, don't, I haven't done a video on the Tour de Fleece yet. If you haven't heard about the Tour de Fleece, that will be coming later in July. It is um, a spinning fiber event that I'm kind of participating in a little bit. All right, well, I have yapped long enough. All right, in order to say goodbye, I got to put my hat on. <laughs> Bye, friends. Have a great day. And oh, and thanks for the new subscribers. I'm down, I'm up to 842 or something like that. That's pretty fun. Um, I just do this channel for fun. I don't do it for any. Matter of fact, I'm, I kind of don't want to get to the number where I can monetize. I don't want to monetize the blog, which means advertising on the on not the blog, on the videos. But um, but YouTube makes you do that. They will do it. So I kind of wish I could just not ever grow that big. What do you think? Can we keep it small? <laughs> All right. Um, well, y'all have fun and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.